Welcome to this edition of Parent Quick Smarts, third grade, unit three, relating multiplication and division. In this unit of study, students will problem solve with multiplication and division, understand the inverse operations, and discover properties of multiplication. To begin, let's look at this problem. Daisy is planning for a party. She wants to put seven flowers in each of her four vases. How many flowers does she need to buy? Students could solve this problem by building an array or making equal groups or even using repeated addition. Your child may use a graphic organizer such as this to work with multiplication and division problems. Does this problem involve equal groups? Yes, each vase should have seven flowers. I know there are seven flowers in each group. I also know there are four vases, so four groups. I don't know the total. An equation I could use to represent this story is four times seven equals something. In third grade, students continue working with variables to represent the unknown. I could use the letter T to represent the total. At this point, I can use any method I am comfortable with to solve, perhaps making groups of counters. I know there are 28 flowers in all. The Buccaneers scored 28 points in their game last Sunday. They only scored touchdowns, which are worth seven points. How many touchdowns did they score? Students might choose to build an array to solve this problem or they could make equal groups. They could even choose to use repeated subtraction. Does this problem involve equal groups? Yes, each touchdown is worth seven points. Looking at the story, we know they scored 28 points. This is the total. Each touchdown is worth seven points. This is the number in each group. We don't know the number of groups. Perhaps we could think division to write our equation. 28 divided by seven equals something. These numbers look familiar to a problem we have already worked with, the flower problem. I could just use a multiplication fact I know to solve a division problem. How many groups of seven make 28? I know that is four. In explaining how I solved, I can talk about using multiplication to solve division problems. As part of the Florida Mathematics Standards, your child will also be expected to write stories to match a given equation. Two examples to match this equation, four groups of something equals 28, could include, my friend Jay has four bags of lollipops. We dumped them all out onto the table and counted 28 in all. How many lollipops were in each bag? Or, my dad has four times as many lollipops as I have. He has 28 lollipops. How many lollipops do I have? When you hear the terms multiplication and division, your mind may take you back to your days in school and those endless hours of flashcards and timed tests. Timed tests can develop a level of anxiety with many children, which interferes with learning. At this point in third grade, we want students to develop an understanding of multiplication and division by working with grouping stories and manipulatives. In this way, they are working towards building fluency with their facts. Flashcards do not provide an understanding of these operations. Once an understanding occurs, flashcards may be used later in the year to reinforce known facts. When the time comes to reinforce known facts, consider triangle flashcards as an alternative to traditional flashcards. Look at the triangle card given. What are the four multiplication division sentences you can create? Fact triangles help students create fact families from related facts and reinforce the connection between multiplication and division. With fact triangles, you can also, also cover up one of the numbers. If you cover eight, what is the product of two groups of four or four groups of two? You can also cover one of the factors. What is eight divided by two? Or what is eight divided by four? You can also think 
how many groups of four would it take to make eight? One property of operations in mathematics is the commutative property. Your child has already worked with the commutative property of addition in prior grades. For example, 7 plus 3 equals 10, and 3 plus 7 equals 10. The order of the add-ends does not change the sum. The commutative property of multiplication works on the concept that the order of the factors does not change the product. Your child will not need to know the definition or the name of this property, but will find that working with the property can be helpful. For example, since we know 4 groups of 2 equals 8, therefore we also know 2 groups of 4 equals 8. Your child may discover this in class by building an array. They can rotate the array and see how the total number of counters did not change, but the order of the factors did. 4 rows of 2 totals 8 counters, or 2 rows of 4 also totals 8 counters. They can also see this by building equal groups. 4 groups of 2 gives me the same total as 2 groups of 4. Multiplying by 1 and 0 often seems like a simple rule, but it is complex for students to understand conceptually. Through exploration, your child will discover this rule. Let's look at a problem that involves multiplication by 1. Kalib had 6 cups. He put one marble in each cup. How many marbles did he use? How could we model this problem? We have six cups and we put one marble in each cup. So six groups of one equals six. You could also build a six by one array to prove this. Here's a similar problem. Now Kalib only has one cup with six marbles in it. So one group of six is the same as six. I could also build a one by six array. Modeling this concept is much different than just telling a child whenever you multiply by one, you will get the same number. They will have a much better understanding and be able to apply this in future years, such as with solving equations and working with fractions. Again, we see this concept with multiplying by zero. Kalib has zero marbles and six cups. How many marbles can he put in each cup? He doesn't even have any marbles, so he won't put any in any of the cups. What about this scenario? Kalib had six marbles and he wants to put them in zero cups. How many marbles in each cup? Well, we don't even have a cup to put the marbles in. Your child will learn that division by zero cannot be done. We have no groups to divide into. Here are some helpful questions to ask your child during this unit. What information are you given in the problem? Can you make a model to show me the actions in the problem? What equation matches your model? How do you know when to multiply or when to divide? How can multiplication help me solve a division problem? Can you solve that same problem using a different strategy? To make this concept more meaningful for your child, you can look for real world examples of situations involving equal groups, especially arrays, such as this box of delicious donuts, or this tray of candied apples. You'd be surprised where arrays can be found. You can even create your own. To continue to work together to support your child in mathematics, please be sure to keep in communication with your child's teacher. You may also utilize the resources available on thinkcentral.com and be sure to visit the district's math webpage. See you next episode.